Welcome back to the Cow Park Bros. Jason and I have just finished off the uh, segment regarding the shenanigans of Aaron Rodgers. But we're happy to, to have our last segment really cover the end of an era. Um, an era of, of, of discipline, of greatness, of passion, of, of hatred, mainly from other fans and other, of other teams and fan bases and alumni and uh, Twitter beefs and you name it. Because we're talking about a legacy that spans four decades. And that is the legacy of one, Mike Krzyzewski, head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. Jason. We've been watching, we, we, we've been watching basketball, what, at least 30 years? More than that? Uh, I'd say probably, for, uh, Sports in general, yeah, for me, about 30-ish years or so, maybe a little more. Uh, but, yeah, it's been about that time. And Coach K has been at Duke for literally our entire lives. So to see someone else suiting up as the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils, um, and full disclosure, Jason and I are both fans of Duke basketball. Um I wanted to know, like, what are some of the highlights of your fandom um, watching this team and watching Coach K over the last uh, last uh, 30 years or so? So, again, yesterday we talked about uh, this being a topic, potentially, and I looked up when exactly he actually took the Duke job. Um, and honestly, I knew he'd been there for a long time, at least since 92. I knew he had the job before that, like back in the mid-'80s. But when I actually looked up the dates of when he took the job, I realized he had been the coach since 1980. That's when you, like you said, realized that that technically he's been the Duke coach longer than we've been alive. At least for me, at least. Um, he took, I wasn't able to find what month he got the job, but he got the job in 1980. You and I both were born in 1980. Uh, since I was born in the fall, I'm presuming he had the job before that. So, at least for me, he's basically been the coach longer than I've been alive. That's a long time, bro. I'm not old or anything, but still, I still a long time. So, so yeah, it. it um, I'll say this: the day we or year we knew it was going to be coming, he's going to turn 75 during the season, towards the end of it, but still during the season. Uh, he can't do this forever. As much as we would love to as Duke fans, just, just you know, realistically, it's not going to happen. So, uh, when he announced this uh, some months ago that uh, this upcoming season is going to be his last one. Definitely had to make me sit back and kind of realize that all this, uh, all this time, all the moments of Duke that you and I have talked about over the years, even though the players may have changed, it's always been the same coach, Coach K. I mean, how many other schools have gone through coach, through coach, through coach in the amount of time that he's been in the amount of time that he's been there? Even the rival North Carolina, they've had I think at least four coaches now. Since so, uh, since you know, Coach K has been released. Since uh, you and I've been watching basketball, three at least for sure. But I'm pretty sure it's four. But, but yeah. So, but as far as uh, answer your question, some of the highlights for me, for me, is going to be that first championship. Not that we're going to talk about just the championships, but for me, that's what stands out because, like you said, that's around the time frame when I started getting into sports, getting into basketball. Duke were the champ. Well, they just become the champions. So I let's on to them like. This is my favorite team. I like Duke. Let's go. Now, some might say that's bandwagon jumping, but hey, I've been on the train for for thirty years, so I think I I, I think it's beyond just bandwagon jumping there. But um, but to me, that stands out, and I, I didn't find out till later of the adversity they had the year before, nineteen ninety, when it comes to getting their doors blown off by UNLV, and then coming back in that ninety one season, beating the same UNLV in the semifinal round to win the championship. Um, and then going on that later that year to win the title. So to me, that one stands out, of course. Um, and of course, you can't, you have to talk about the fact that he's the all time winningest coach in all of college basketball history, regardless of division, regardless of gender, male or female basketball. It's him. 
Uh, at least it is for now. There's somebody that may pass him in the next few years if they still remain active, which I'm sure they will. But for right now, he's the all-time winningest coach. He's going to add some more wins to this. Hopefully, he's at 1170 or 1171 now because they won like one yesterday, beating Kentucky. And it's always good to see them beat Kentucky. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, if I, I told you yesterday, I'd love to see him get 1,200 wins, but that would mean they have to win 30 win 30 games this year. Which if, if they win 30, that's going to put them in a good spot. So. Um, so those are my definitely two big highlights. Um, also, to I don't want to just talk about the 2015 championship, but that's part of it, is the switch that he kind of made in philosophy to the whole one-and-done uh, players. Because before that, he hadn't really go, uh, gone fully in to it. I know Luol Deng was on the team. He was there for like one freshman year. I don't know if he drafted. You know, if they picked Luol Deng knowing he was going to leave after one year. But in 2015, that's when you had those mega three freshmen, Okafor, Justin Winslow, um, you know, and the other gentleman whose name I who's forget my mind right now, uh, point guard. And I admit I was totally against that. I didn't like it. I'm like, we don't need to do this, blah blah blah. Um, but looking back on it now, obviously they got the championship. But look back on me as someone who's willing to adapt. I think even he was against it himself. But he knew he had to adapt in order to. Be competitive at least. And not that they weren't good before, but still, you know, obviously it got to, to the point of getting a championship, going on to get other one and done players, such as, you know, guys that are that are in the NBA now, whether it be Marvin Bagley, Zion Williamson, such as they are. Um, so that moment kind of stands out to me as well, kind of that change in the philosophy to the one and done players and and, and that right there. So I'll go ahead and cut it off because I want to get, let you get in, get in on this. Because you're probably the second biggest Duke fan that I know behind me. Um, yeah. Um, there are there are a lot of um, milestones and memories for me. One of the biggest deals is that Coach K is a college coach. He's been doing this for four years, but he's also been able to kind of pivot and also have success during his time as a head coach with the men's Olympic basketball team. And for me, his ability to kind of switch gears, because you're talking about, you're dealing with the likes of Kobe, LeBron, you know, big personalities, right? With big contracts and being able to navigate that and and still have a, a, a cohesive team and then be successful in a short window of time. Props to him, man. That's a big deal. I also find, um, for me, the favorite my favorite championship is probably the '92 year because it's the it's the year they repeated. You know, you know '91. No, 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 no uh, slouch in that regard. It's just that for me, the the year after you've won it, everyone's gunning for you, and for them to 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 you know to take everyone's best shot. And of course, 92 is the shot by Christian Leitner against Kentucky. Um, yet another reason <laughs> to, to, to make uh, all of uh, this the Duke situation uh, and make it the success is what makes makes the Duke basketball just one of the most hated uh, sports entities of all time. I mean, at a certain point, we're literally the Yankees of college basketball. So, um, but yeah, I would agree. The, you know, I remember when uh, Corey Maggette left early and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> that might be a trend. <laughs> and, and I know we've had discussions both on this show and out outside and we've talked to other people, you know, people, I get why people don't like the one and done because you really don't get a good chance to actually learn much about these guys. Um, but also, I really admire and respect Coach K because when you're accustomed to a certain level of success, you kind of have to structure your 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 game plan ar- around the conditions in which you're dealing with. And so to me, that was the biggest sign of, of a leader is a leader that can adapt. Um, yeah, I, 
I'm also going to say one of my favorite moments is the 2010 year because that team, there is no way it helped. Somebody thought that that team was going to actually make it all the way to the Final Four. I, I specifically remember uh, that year um, because obviously we all make those brackets every year for the tournament time when it comes to our, uh, making our brackets to, to you know, predict who's going to win the championship. And I remember talking to you about that. And you know, like, cause we both did one, of course, and you had Duke running all the way through, to win the championship. I'm like, are you crazy? This team, this team. I'm like, no way. I, I think I had them losing like in the Sweet 16 or something like that. But you were pretty confident. I'll never forget that 2010 year because of that. Because when they got to the championship, I'm like, oh my god, Terrence might be right. You know, and they were playing Butler, and I felt pretty confident. Um, you know, and then they and again they did win, so. That's what that's one thing I remember about that 2010 year. Um, also, since we mentioned his the other you know championships, we got to mention the 2001 championship too. I almost feel like that's the forgotten championship of his of his five. Um, which, and the reason why I say that, obviously, like you mentioned, it's either talk about 91, 92 because those are the back to back years. The 2010 game gets mentioned just because of what what almost happened at the ending with Gordon Hayward. Uh, almost hitting that running shot. Even though people keep saying, oh, he almost got it in. Dude got lucky he didn't hit that. I'm like, dude, relax. It's a half-court shot. Nobody got lucky, okay? Uh, and then also the 2015, it being the most recent one. I feel like that 01 championship is the one that gets forgotten. Uh, so definitely got to bring some love to that one. Um, but particularly want to bring it up as well because including that one, that basically mean, meant, or including that one, the Coach K won championships in three different decades. Three different decades. And as I'm looking up coaches who went to multiple Final Fours, I'm not really seeing any that I can say that. There's him, Jim Calhoun. Um, and as I'm scrolling through, unless I'm missing anybody, I think they, they might be the only two. Wow. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, in, in the history of college basketball, and all, of all the guys that have been the multiple Final Fours, even if I'm missing one other one still, if you're among two or three guys that have done that, yeah, that's impressive. I think I'm, yeah, that's it. It's just those two guys. That's it. Yeah. So, another accomplishment that I never thought about till the other day. Um, I knew he had done that three different decades, but I got started thinking, has anybody else actually done that? And, yeah, it's just Jim Calhoun. That's it. Yeah, I kind of sort of hate that it's Jim Calhoun, but, yeah. Well, the... I, well I, do, I do, because, unfortunately, that 99 championship game, they were playing Duke when you know, UConn won that game. So uh, that's – not that this is on Coach K, but that, I tell you what, Terrence, that is probably the biggest heartbreak I've ever had as, as a fan. Because – just like you were so sure about 2010, I was sure about 99, that 99 year. Like they're they're Duke's winning that championship. And well, then, they lost. They lost what two games all year, right? So, so yeah. So I'm like, they're winning the championship. UConn, like who's UConn? Yeah, yeah there you they, go. They, they just had a hell of a run, man. <laughs> yeah, but but it is what it is. So yeah, Coach K is the goat. You know, and you mentioned LeBron and Kobe, and I know I've seen multiple times where both of them have said had they gone to college, it would have they would have gone to Duke to play for Coach K. So now some of that may have been based off of what they know about him now. But hell, even in you know Kobe came to the league in ninety six, I'm sure in ninety six that's still the case. Coach K had was had a high regard then. Same thing with LeBron in 03. I mean at that point Coach K already won three titles. So he was he wasn't good at that point, but he was still a great coach. Everybody knew that. So, so yeah, everybody recognizes him as the GOAT other than Carolina haters, uh, especially you, those of you in the best damn score, uh, sports group, period. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yup. But um, we, we see you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, we do see you. So uh, Coach K is the GOAT with the wins. The championships, he has five. Hopefully, again, like I said, we'll get, you know, ideally 30 more to get to 1,200 uh, wins. That would be great. Ideally, the season will have a great a great storybook ending with him winning the championship, getting the sixth title. 
again, long way away, so I'm not predicting it. So don't go there. Don't at me saying Jason said this. It's not an official prediction. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying but, if it were to okay. end, if it were to lead to that, that would be the ultimate storybook ending. And, and folks, they, the reason why we talked about this, just want to throw this out there real quick. We brought this up now because the they just played. They had their opening game of the season to kick off the uh, farewell tour tour for Coach K. They beat Kentucky, and again, once again, always good to beat Kentucky. So, so yeah, but um, so again, so he's at 1171 now. So hopefully 20, 29 more come this year. So knock on wood, bud. Knock on wood. Yeah, it'll be a storybook ending, and also a great chance to gloat <laughs> in some of our sports circles, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you, you mentioned, too, that uh, Duke is one of those teams, uh, and Coach K to some degree is one of those teams and franchises, if you want to call it that, that you either love them or you hate them. Excuse me, folks, and there with, with the Yankees, the Raiders, you know, teams like that, the Cowboys, for that matter, you know, even though they're not winning. Uh, at least not championships anyway recently, but Duke's that way. But and I, and I think we had to owe that all to Coach K. Um, the organization wasn't really a whole lot at that point by the time he took over, which he took over in 1980. And at that point, they went to a, a Final Four in '86, '88, '89, '90, '91, '92. So and obviously got those first two championships in '91, '92. Even went back to the Final Four in the ter- championship game again in '94. So, um, very underrated team, by the way. Yes, that I probably put that as a close number two to my Duke heartbreaks when it comes to in general, not just championships, but but yeah, that um, that one hurt a little bit because I think that one hurt more because we were kind of hoping to get three out of four, kind of be a dynasty, and have Christian Leitner go out with three three. Well, not not Christian Leitner, but uh, Grant Hill. Yeah, because at that point, Grant, uh, Grant Hill. Yeah, we're um, still there. Yeah, Hurley was gone. Right. Um, Leitner was gone, but you still had a strong nucleus. I mean, that's that. First off, that was like when you realize, like, holy shit, Grant Hill is going to be amazing at the next level. Okay. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so. but yeah, man, Coach K. Um, it, it is. I don't want to say it's gonna be very weird. Um, cause they, the Dukes, uh, Dukes already named his replacement, uh, going into the next year. It's uh, John Shire who obviously played for coach K, um, back when coach, uh, John was a student. Um, uh, actually, uh, if I recall correctly, Shire was, on, yeah, he was on the 2010 team that won the championship. So, um, I I'd say based off of, and obviously I think everybody knew that the replacement was going to be so it was going to be a Duke guy, you know, um, not to say somebody that played for. Duke, but at least somebody that coached under Coach K. That's what they got. They got both. Somebody that played under him and coached under him. So um, I think it's going to be in good hands. Uh, obviously, he's going to get the chance to run the program the way he wants to. Um, so it's good to see. So I, I'm not going to say it's going to be weird to watch Duke games next year when Coach K is not the coach. But I just think it'll be that moment in history. I mean, also going to be a lot, a lot of pressure on Shire because you you know you're the first guy after the goat. You know, just like like we joked yesterday, Matt Doherty was the guy after Dean Smith. Um, now, hopefully, John Shire has a better you know Duke career than uh, Matt Doherty did at Carolina. But um, but that that pressure is going to be there because of what Coach K did. You know, Coach K wouldn't have been around for forty years if he wasn't bringing a good culture, as they say, to the program. I mean, championships obviously are what they are, and I, I, he might not have been around that long. He did not won five titles. But the but the fact that kids go to Duke for Coach K, even though he's in his seventies, I think that speaks volumes too. Because how easy could it have been? Hell, we joked about people joked about the White Sox when it comes to Tony Russo being the manager. He wouldn't be able to connect with those young players. Coach K has found a way to do it, you know, for forty years. You know. He's seventy. He's going to be seventy-five. He still gets those one and done guys to come there. Even before that, he was still getting top-notch players to come there. Still, so, so yeah, um, it, it's all about Coach K. He's the goat. I mean, I know I said that twenty million times, but so. Hey, Terrence, guess what? What? 
I'm gonna say it again. He's a goat. <laughs> and I have no argument because I also feel like his legacy at this point is unassailable. You know, <laughs> over the years he's endured a lot of shit talking, um, from pundits, critics, haters, you name it. Um, but for me, this is really a victory lap for a legend. And, you know, if he, if he gets, if they actually win this whole damn thing, then, then it's just more fuel to the fire. Like imagine a guy literally win, winning his sixth title, riding into the sunset. Um, but either way, I feel like he's a winner because, you know, it's unheard of, you know, all, all of the other legends have uh, retired. You know, Roy Williams is out. Um, uh, Patino is kind of out for a different reason, <laughs> but uh, um, hey, he's still he's it. still he's still coaching though. He, he was he, you know he was doing his coaching thing, not yeah, at Kentucky he, or Louisville. But, yeah, but there's, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a reason though, and that's why I'm literally acting as though he, if he's literally been archived. So Not for respectful, you. respectfully, <laughs> go home and be a family man. I, I, oh wait, oh wait, he can't be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to point out something else. Um, that when it comes to the most Final Four appearances by a coach, is a is a is a tie. For number one, with twelve, John Wooden, Coach K. So, even if you were just just to get to the Final Four this year, even that's making history. So, so yeah, and that and that's that says a lot too. The fact that he's been the twelve Final Four is that that on par with John Wooden, one more than Dean Smith, three more than Roy Williams, you know, you know, four more than Tom Izzo, you know, thing like that. Six more than Adolf Rupp. Um. So, so yeah, you know, yeah. So I'll I'll leave it at that. You know, he he's definitely the goat in so many different ways. Some people may pass him in certain categories. You know, like I said, Tara uh, Tara Vanderveer, I believe, is a uh, uh, fifty five. Excuse me, forty five wins behind him as of right now. I guess now forty six behind him now. Uh, she may pass him eventually, um, but uh, but still. I think a lot of people are still going to regard him as the GOAT, no matter what. No matter what people do to pass him, you know, the wins may be passed, Final Fours or whatnot, but he's still going to be looked at as the GOAT. The G-O-A-T. Yep. yep. And the the resume speaks for itself. So I look forward to a successful campaign. Boom. All right. That concludes our s- segment on Coach K. And the legend that is Coach K. Uh, Coming up, we'll uh, wrap up the show on Cal Park Rose.